It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey, excellent. You know, three is a very lucky number for some people, and, and there's three of you here, so so what? Uh, let's, let's move on. All right, as we say in the business, let's start. All right, let's get going by passing out the hardware. Listen up. Say the question comes up and your neighbor gets that Mount Rushmore look on their face like they don't know what's going on. It's a perfect time to buzz in, hit the S key, and screw them. Then they gotta answer. Got it? Anyway, um, can we go now? Player two, give me something. Okay, give it up for I'll be there for you, unless I'm Chandler. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Put it in gear, cause here we go. If Matthew Perry were replaced by Commodore Matthew Perry on an episode of Friends, what would you most likely see happen? Chandler breaking the sound barrier, Chandler playing old computer games, Chandler sailing into Tokyo Harbor, or Chandler becoming pregnant? Player 2, grab it! Commodore Perry sailed into Tokyo Harbor in 1853 and forced Japan to open its harbors to the outside world. In an historical side note, Commodore Perry also made a failed attempt at a movie career. Player 2, take your pick. Let's see what we got going. Cute spiders. This one can net you a grand. Heads up, here it comes. If that lovable TV tot Webster were actually a web-spinning spider, what would not have been true about Emmanuel Lewis's adorable character? He would have blue blood, he would have six legs, he would recycle his own web, or he would probably... Up to you, Player 3. Huh? Player one, player two, who's taking it? Player one. Spiders have eight legs, not six. It's too bad they only have one life, though. Hey, Emmanuel. Player one, your choice. What are we doing? Open wide and get ready for I'm Too Sexy for My Shirt. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. Because he's given credit for discovering the fabled G-Spot, which gentleman might honestly be able to wear one of those highly sought-after world's greatest lover t-shirts? Alan Guttmacher, Ernest Graffenberg, B.F. Goodrich, or Yuri Gagarin? Take a shot, player two. German gynecologist, Dr. Ernest Graffenberg. <laughs> I went to my OBGYN and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. You have the honors, player two. You can't stop at three, no, you gotta have four. Shake hands with people who read people are the luckiest people. And you're playing for $3,000 cash money. Ah, the 80s. What the hell were we thinking? According to People Magazine, who is the sexiest man alive in 1986? John F. Kennedy Jr., Mark Harmon, Harry Hamlin, or Patrick Swayze? All yours, player one. Sexiest man alive in 1986, no contest, it was Mark Harmon. <laughs> and for all you guys slapping your beer bellies and saying, Sexy is next to me, just knock it off. <laughs> Player one, it's up to you. What's next? Let's blow this time and head for number five. The category? Robert Frost nipping at your nose. How does $2,000 sound? Hey, not everyone can be a meteorologist. It takes a person who's got a way with, uh, things to say. 
If poet Carl Sandberg recited one of his poems while delivering your local five-day forecast, what type of weather might you expect? A dark and stormy night, rain with small hands, fog coming in on little cat feet, or a silent, soft, and slow snowfall? <laughs> Player one, you've just been screwed. Let's see what you've got. I'm sorry, but E.E. E. Cummings was the poet who wrote that nobody, not even the rain, chooses such wrong answers! <laughs> player two, player three, who wants it? Player three, do it! According to Mr. Sandberg, the fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Gee, and all this time I thought fog was condensed water vapor and cloud-like masses lying close to the ground and limiting visibility, when in fact it's merely stuttering cat spit. It's all about you, Player 3. Well, looks like this category is Read My Lips, No More History Questions. And we got 3,000 bucks in the pot. Put your tray in the upright position. It's time for takeoff. Which of these was not a winning campaign slogan for a U.S. president? Jackson forever, go the whole hog, free wool for our breeches, old rough and ready, always loved his men, or poked him in 44, we'll pierce him in 52. Layer 3. Player two, you're getting screwed. Screw back. Nope, Grover Cleveland won his second term with his supporters babbling something about wanting free wool. Yep, free wool and lower taxes. That's all I ask for. Ah. Player one, player three. Ah. Player one, hit it. Oh, rough and ready, always loved his men is the only made up slogan in the bunch. Hey, here's a funny political slogan for you. I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Player one, tell me what's happening. Seven, lucky, lucky seven. For your enjoyment, to be or not to be, Arthur. Looks like this one's going for a thousand bucks. All right, here's one for you TV theme song buffs. What are the concluding lyrics to the theme song of the 70s sitcom, Maud? Anything but tranquilize and write on Maud, she'll get tempers rise and fighting Maud. Don't discuss her thighs and anger Maud. Player one. Well, she may get tempers rising, but uh, unfortunately not your score. Player two, player three, the time is now. Take a shot, player two. Maud's thighs? Um, either you were going through puberty in the mid-70s, or you are now. Player three, it's up to you. Player three, do it. Uh, could we have the check, please? Jeez, someone's trying to make me earn my paycheck. Uh, here's the right answer. <laughs> we're talking about that uncompromising, enterprising, anything but tranquilizing right on Maud. Hmm, for some reason I feel like wearing polyester and drinking scotch. 